Hello and welcome to another episode of Metal Effort. My name's Nehemiah, and today we're checking out this piece of metal, the Mass Drop Keen by Ray Laconico. This is a pretty uh, interesting knife. I didn't see any YouTube reviews of the Keen uh, at all, anywhere. I couldn't, I looked all over YouTube and uh, there was none. There's not a single review of this knife. So, uh, you know, I figured I would do a review so people know what the heck this knife is about, right? Because it's not anywhere on the internet. So let's get into it. We've got our Spyderco PM2. We've got our Spyderco Para 3 for our comparison. 3 inch, 3.44. The Mastrop Keen is just a hair smaller than the blade on the PM2. So we're looking at like 3.4 ish on the cutting blade. 3.4. For five maybe to the shoulder of the blade it's kind of a weird length either you're shooting for like three 3.25 3.5 this is like somewhere a little, a little bit smaller than this which this 3.44 is already kind of weird length so interesting size definitely I, I think it's kind of hard for my brain to like calculate how big this knife is uh, because it's right in that medium size um, that you don't see very often. So that's that's interesting. So let's launch into our dent. The decent, the excellent, the nitpicks, and the terrible of this piece of metal. First off, in the dent, we've got our fit and finish. The fit and finish on this knife is really, really good. It's crazy when you consider it. So you've got like perfect centering. You've got tight tolerances on the backspacer. It's very, very machined well, snug together. I've taken this part of knife, I've cleaned it, and uh, that did help the action actually a little bit. Um, so yeah, and then the finish on this kind of, it's titanium, but it's like a, a brass stonewash type thing going on, and it really plays with the light well. I hope this is picking it up but in person, this knife looks a lot better. I thought I was just going with this really boring brass one because all those YouTube video reviews that don't exist all have the purple finish. And uh, I like purple, but I don't know. I just don't like falling around with the crowd. You know, I want to be unique and do a review that nobody else has done. So the blade shape on this is really good. It's a classic spear point. It really reminds me of my uh, Bark River Aurora. It's like got the same kind of profile, maybe a little bit more chubby to the point, but uh, I really like this type of spear point um, blade shape. It's just so practical. It's not really a flat on the blade. It's almost all be belly. I don't know if you call this a recurve. Right? It's not really a recurve. It's just tapers to the back. But this is just so practical. I, I've done some food prep with it, cut open some boxes, and I never felt like I was frustrated with the, the shape of the blade. It's got enough of a point that you have no problems stabbing into some clamshell. Uh, it's got a really nice, you know, full flat grind. Uh, it's very cute behind the edge. Notice what I didn't say. And... I, I really just like the simplicity of the blade. It's, it's clean on this side. We'll talk about the other side in a little bit. And I like it. I really like the blade shape and the performance of, of the blade. The next thing I like is the clip. The clip is super duper long. Uh, this is not a short knife and this comes like over halfway to the knife. Uh, some people might be annoyed by that. I'm not in the least. I like long clips for some reason. I don't really have a practical justification for that, but I just do. And uh, it kind of, it looks cool in your pocket. It, it's like a weird, you know, pen that you might have in your pocket or something. Uh, it's very practical. You got plenty of, of tension to get in there. Lots of room for your jeans. It's not poking the hand. Um, I really, really like the clip. Everything is just great on, on the fit and finish and look of this. I, yeah. Uh, the Ergos. So the Ergos, 
Now, I'm not going to say these are great. There's definitely nothing negative to say about the Ergos. The clip fits in there just fine. There's no hot spots. Um, I've got plenty of purchase with my thumb. The basic shape of it just, you know, kind of curves back this way so it keeps your pinky on there. Doesn't want to fall off. You got plenty of room for bigger hands. Smaller hands should do the trick. I like I like it, but it's not it's not really all that contoured. I mean, it it kind of curves a little bit, but it's not you know it doesn't have a finger kind of groove here. There's not a lot going on. You know, most knives have something happening. The shape of this handle reminds me of like the VW Beetles, and you know the modern ones where the door has like no lines on it. I'll show a picture. There's no lines on it, and it's just like one solid just door. There's no like speed lines. There's no little grooves anywhere. It's just door. And this kind of reminds me of that. It's just like handle. There's no <laughs> like anything on it. And I'm not saying that in the negative way. It's just weird how a handle with nothing is so unique. You, you would think that more of these types of just blank handles would be out and about, but it's not. It's kind of unique in that way, which is interesting. So, point that out. Uh, the other thing is that there is a lanyard hole, and uh, you know, looking through the lanyard hole, it's like a perfect circle. Tight tolerances again, that's the way to point it out. I'm not a lanyard hole guy, but this lanyard hole looks functional. It's not in the way, it's not offending me as a person who doesn't like lanyard holes. So, I give it a, I give it a passing grade. I've got three excellent things for this knife. Hang on to your britches. First off, the action on this is amazing. I already put it in my excellent category, and then I was like, you know what, I'm just gonna clean out the knife real quick and just get in there, make sure I know what's going on, see how easy it is to take it apart. And I cleaned it out, and the action got even better. So, uh, yeah, it's hard to communicate over video how good it feels to flip this knife. It's just, it's strong, it's authoritative, it's smooth. It's effortless. It's, oh man, the detent is not like crazy strong. This isn't a trick of just really strong detent. It is good detent. It's like perfectly medium. You can't shake out the blade no matter what you do. And uh, it comes out nice and strong every time. That's what she did. And uh, the fall, the fall shut on this is super smooth. I mean, if you do it like, not like a really aggressive one, but just like a whoop, it goes down perfectly, doesn't bounce back out. It is so nice. I just look at this action. This is like one of the best fidgety knives I've I've used for such a cheap price. This is so good. Ugh. All right, I gotta put it down. I'm gonna keep doing that. All right, uh, next thing, clean line, simple. Kinda already mentioned this, but just the kind of like steampunk gentleman's folder kind of a vibe I get from this. I feel like you're not going to scare anybody. You take this out, even though the action's like, ha-ha, I gotcha. Uh, they're like, oh, that's a cute knife. It's 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 not like, um, what am I trying to say? Like, it doesn't look like chintzy. It doesn't look cheap. But it also doesn't look like it's trying too hard, I guess. And, uh, you know, just the practicality of it and the look and feel of it. It all comes together in this weird blend of just minimalism, I guess is the point I'm trying to trying to make here. The next thing, the third thing, is the value on this knife. So, this is S35VN steel. Great super steel. There's better, sure, whatever. But S30VN is good. For two, Once you get past $200, I start to complain maybe because there are other $200 knives that are using the premium stuff like M390, but S35VN at this price point is definitely awesome. That's good. Titanium, you've got a steel insert, which is nothing to scoff at. There's a lot of cheaper knives don't have that. Um, so A plus there. This is $140 on mass drop. That like value, the price on this, the materials, the fit and finish, just the, the whole package, the value is just berserk. It reminds me of the Civivi Backlash. And the Backlash is a $42 knife. And it's batting way above its pay grade. And 
this definitely reminds me of it. It, you know, this should cost, you know, maybe $80 considering how good it is. And this should probably cost $200 considering how good it is. And so they're just so much cheaper than what, you know, they're priced at. I, I would say I would have a hard time fig figuring out which one of these two knives has a better value. They're not in the same, you know, batting arena. They're not in the same league uh, overall. You know, this is still using some pretty crappy steel uh, compared to S35 Yen. But just the value is good enough uh, that it's in the excellent. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be talking about this knife a lot in the future. Um, but I'll probably be the only one that talks about it. I, I'm, I'm the only one on the Internet that knows about this, this knife. All right, so let's move into the nitpicks. This knife isn't above my my critique. So first thing, the knife is a little bit heavy. I kind of saved the way in for this. We are clocking in 4.33. Now, this is definitely over an ounce, an inch, and there's a couple things about this. One, you can get a version that has some speed holes in it that does make it a little bit lighter. Um, when you do that, you're paying more money. I think it's like 20 bucks if you're doing the uh, bigger or the the speed holes with different colors and all that jazz. So careful because <laughs> uh, you're you're messing with the value of this knife. Um, I I would say this is fine. The, the the biggest issue isn't so much the total weight because I'm definitely happy to carry this knife around and it's about the same weight. Obviously, it's a bigger blade, um, bigger knife overall, but same weight. The problem that I have is it's kind of butt heavy. So the balance on the blade, let's see if I can kind of find where it is. Yeah, see, it's, it's just very butt heavy. And so it, it does tend to want to kind of like fly up out of your hand if you're being like ginger with it. It's fine. I mean, you grip it like normal. It's not a big deal at all. But if you're somebody that is looking for like zen balance, you're not going to find it in this knife. Um, I haven't tried one of the ones with the speed holes. Maybe that's different, but it seems like the holes are pretty even from here to here, and it's still that backspacer that's weighing it down. So I don't know. Little heavy, little little too much junk in the trunk as far as the weight concerns is concerned. So not super balanced. Not a big deal. Remember, this is my nit nitpicks. So next thing is the angle angle on the flipper tab. So first couple times I tried to flip this, I was like whoop. Oh well, that works that time. Whoop whoop whoop. Like, you can do one of these. If you're not being really intentional, it can slip right off. So, I like that they're, you know, it's chamfered up the wazoo. There's no jimping. And so, it's comfortable. It's not going to, you're not going to get any wear and tear on your fingers from flipping this knife. You just have to concentrate on the light switch maneuver. And you can't, you can't be too loosey-goosey with your, your finger going that way. It needs to go straight down to get that, that perfect opening. So I guess what I mean is I wish there was a little bit of jimping or the angle wasn't quite so sloped down to where it wanted to grab your, your finger a little bit, kind of like the Koenig Arius. It's more of like a flat shelf, so you can see how much this is curved down compared to that. This one I'm not flipping off any way possible, even though this, uh, this doesn't have jimping. Now, keep in mind I'm comparing it to a $600 knife, but, you know, they could change the angle of this just a smidgen and I think it would help the knife out quite a lot, just in, in that particular area. Make it more of a pocket pecker, so there's a trade-off. Next thing, you have to wait for Mass Drop to let you buy the knife. <laughs> so as kind of anybody familiar with Mass Drop, uh, they have some stuff that's just always for sale, but usually it just comes in like these big waves. They have a giant order from the manufacturer and then sell a bunch all at once. So I kind of got in at the tail end of the second drop on this knife. Uh, kind of got lucky in that regard. Uh, I'm I'm pretty sure that the reception of this knife is going to be pretty good after my video goes viral because I'm the only one that's uh, reviewing the the keen here. But uh, I, I'm sure once the word gets out, they'll start doing more drops. And if you want to get this knife, it it'll be easy for you to get one. Great Christmas gift, uh, by the way. Speaking of mass drop, there is <laughs> that giant mass drop billboard there, or as some people like to call it, ass drop. Um, yeah, it's not really all that tasteful. It's, uh, considering how clean and nice and minimalistic the rest of the knife is, I think that billboard is getting a little bit overblown as far as how much we all are annoyed by it, but 
yeah, I, I don't think they need to be like that. I like the location of Ray Laconico's kind of signature there. That's something subtle. You can feel it. It's almost like miniature jimping, um, just the print on. Uh, that's fine. I like that. And the S35EN is, you know, using really thin font. I don't mind that at all. But just mass drop. Lowercase even annoys me. I mean, that's like their thing. But, um, yeah, I doubt they're going to change that. But it's there. It's kind of annoying. Not a big deal. Next, in the terrible, there's nothing terrible about this knife. I couldn't, I tried really hard about the things in the nitpicks to move it down to terrible, and nothing really justifies it. So, let's go on to my conclusion. What's my conclusion? This is one of the few knives that I've handled since I've started my channel where I can just universally recommend this to anyone. There's two knives that really deserve that honor. I, there's other knives that I like and I can call them gems and I can recommend them, recommend them to certain people. But as far as like universal recommendations go, I would say it's the Spidey Chef and it's the, the Mass Drop Keen. Where if you're interested in the nice knife, you know, normally you buy $20 knives, normally you buy $2,000 knives, whatever. If somebody got you one of these knives for Christmas, you would be really happy about it, basically, is, is kind of the, the point I'm getting to. This is $215, hard to get to. Um, but both these knives are doing something different. Both of them are so good in general that I can recommend them to anybody. Do you like a good action? Get a Keen. Do you like something that's just ultra practical? get a Spyderco uh, Spidey Chef. Both of these are just really fantastic knives. So yeah, i uh pretty positive on this knife. I, I hope you can get one just to experience it. Even if uh, it's not a knife you end up using all the time, if you're, if you're, this is too like thin for your blood, uh, after you buy it and get to play with it, you can gift it on to somebody else who's gonna love the hell out of it. So that's it for my review guys. I'll see you in the next one. Bye. Thank you